Um, so I'm uh, Bastian Blössl and I'm really happy to talk uh, briefly about GQRX and maybe somebody if you already use it or knows about GQRX I usually see it as the software version of a normal radio so if you use GQRX and an RTL SDR dongle for example then it's pretty much the same than um, my uh, normal radio. Um, and just like this radio, it also has some audio output. And this is um, what I like most because it allows me to connect all kinds of different other programs. Um, and I'm a computer science student. I usually like to play with um, digital modes. So I usually um, pipe out the audio signal and then um, play a bit around with um, digital receivers. Okay, so, but first, some more words about me. I'm currently a PhD student in Paderborn, and there uh, at the university, I work a bit with software-defined radio, but also in my free time, I usually try to, yeah, find out how things work. Like, last year, for example, I showed how my um, wireless car key fob works, or some traffic lights, or what the antennas on the buses are for, and stuff like that. So I usually like a lot to play around, and uh, often I do my work with GNU Radio, because GNU Radio is just um, very awesome. Okay, so um, first, this is how GQRX looks like, and I, I guess everybody of you already use something like this. There is also SDR Sharp, or I guess it's called HD SDR. But the cool thing about GQRX is that it's um, running on Linux and it's open source. So what can be better? Yeah, and it's um, developed by also an, uh, by Alessandro Sasset, and it comes already with some visualization, like the waterfall plot in the spectrum, and it provides, um, has some demodulators, so like if you want to just, just use uh, analog modes, it works out of the box, so for example, for FM or single sideband stuff, whatever. Um, but um, today, what I want to talk about is that you can get the um, audio out, out, out of this uh, thing, and here, um, you have two options. You can either record a WAV file and do some offline signal processing, or you can stream the audio signal um, through a network socket and connect to it and then have a live receiver. And I think the idea of doing this is really, really, really great. For So first of all, I already said, like it's really like a normal radio where you also have the audio output and where people used to connect their radios to um, the sound card of the computer, for example. But it also feels right from like a computer science perspective, like it's the Unix philosophy. You have one tool and it's doing one thing, it's doing it right, and then you, um, and then you um, work well with other programs, means like you get the signal out, feed it in the next program, feed it in the next program, like you do it on a shell. And there was also uh, the discussion, or at least I followed it a bit, um, like, should there be GQRX digital, meaning like, put all these digital modes inside of GQRX, and I didn't completely get the point, so I was not involved in the discussion, but I think if you have this kind of software and the odd um, can export it, it feels right. So what I did is I connect all kinds of different software with GQRX, and um, what it usually requires is some kind of plumping, like how can I get the data out? Then most of the time you have to do format conversions uh, or resampling or stuff like that, and then you feed it in the other programs. So this is an overview of some of the programs that I used, but um, hopefully the two at the, uh, at the top, which is Audacity and Boardline, they are for offline signal processing. I hope that we can now maybe declare them obsolete and say, yeah, we have Inspectrum, it's doing pretty much the same thing and um, it's open source. So Audacity it was for, is for audio, Boardline has some licensing issues, so meaning it's not open source, it's free to use, but it's not open source. Then, then we have uh, Inspectrum. Multimon is uh, a tool that you might be already familiar with. It's pretty old and allows you to um, decode all kinds of digital modes. And then there's GNU Radio where you can, it's like the most advanced stuff, then you can really connect to it and build your own digital receiver. So doing everything on your own, this is the, then the, the most advanced stuff. And yeah, so this talk, I will focus on the uh, on these three, three programs and tell you about the plumping. I won't go into details about um, all, all these applications, but tell you, uh, focus on how you get from GQRX to feed it to the other, um, the other programs. What we often use is, is uh, SOX, and SOX is for um, audio conversion. So sound exchange, it's called, and they see themselves as the Swiss army knife of sound. I usually, when I read it, I think it's like the pandoc of sound, like converting every document to every other document format that you can think of. 
And yeah, so and it's a command line utility, so you can just uh, set up some easy scripts. And the the first example uh, what I want to start with is, as I already told you, um, Multimon. Maybe you you've already used it before because um, usually people used to connect their radio through to the sound card, and Multimon can read from the sound card. And maybe you already used it to, for example, receive um, AFSK beacons or stuff like that. But it uh, also supports um, Boxsack, which is um, for pages here in Germany. It's usually used by fire uh, firefighters or the ambulance, for example. And here at the at the bottom, I've um, I wrote down the the program like what you would have to do uh, in order to get that running and connect. Um, Multimon, which is at the bottom, um, to GQRX. And since it's the, the first simple example, I just wanted to, to go through it very quickly to give you a bit um, the idea of what happens. So from, from GQRX, you have the ability to um, stream via UDB by just clicking that button. It allows you to configure which port you want to stream to. And then you can just connect to that running flow graph with, it's called Netcut, which is just reading from the socket. So you just read the samples that GQRX sends from um, in fr from the socket, and these pipes are for Unix, meaning that you are kind of forwarding the output of one program as the input of the next following program. Like you can chain together a series of commands. So this is these what I think is uh, great, like the Unix philosophy what I told before. And then we feed this output um, to SOX, which in this case does some some um, format conversion. In, in this particular case, it's pretty easy. It's just using these 16-bit um, eight, eight, integer and um, just changes the sample rate. So this is only doing resampling in that case, but there will be more complex later. Yeah, and again, feeds the output to um, Multimon, where you have where you can say which kinds of um, demodulators you want to activate and uh, work on the signal that you get. And then the example looks like this. Um, I just recorded this some hours ago outside. So it says something from a club station at Ham Radio and something from Constance and all this. So currently, um, in, in this particular case, I, I decoded um, AFSK, which is, to be honest, the most um, not, not the best example because this is actually the only digital mode that uh, GQRX supports out of the box. So strictly speaking, that wouldn't have been required. Um, but it's legally the most safest way to, so because I didn't want to kind of um, yeah, advertise doing something evil. So it might not always be allowed to decode BoxArc, for example, depending on um, what transmissions there are. So, um, so this is the example with um, AFSK. Then the next thing I wanted to come to is um, just uh, very briefly in Spectrum, because we have also the next talk, which is kind of introducing it. But to kind of uh, maybe appreciate its existence, uh, I thought I, I um, get back to a slide I used last year for decoding this car key fob. And there I had the simple, um, I made some offline signal analysis in Audacity. And I had like this, and wanted to determine the sample rate, and got to Inkscape and did something like this. I know that you can do something with the spectrum, and it's not the best way, but still, um, maybe the easiest, and try to derive the bit rate uh, or the simple rate out of that. Now we don't have to do that um, anymore on our own, because you can use in spectrum, which does just that and allows you to do all kinds of stuff. And there, for example, I, I, used, uh, I decoded the very same signal I used um, the recordings from last year and now play, put them in, in Spectrum. And since in Spectrum usually uses, um, um, once you have a complex baseband signal, um, I just had to do some very minor conversion, like going from the WAV file that I recorded through GQRX and um, just made a complex out of it and then stored it again. So once quickly through new radium, and then I had the signal that I could feed to uh, in Spectrum and use it to um, derive the bitrate. But there will be a a separate talk about in Spectrum where we will learn all uh, um, about all its abilities. Okay, so the last thing I, I just wanted to quickly um, show is GNU Radio. And this is what I like most because then I can build stuff myself. So if you say you download GQRX, maybe this is the point of buying some radio, switching it on and listening to some audio modes. With, with GNU Radio, it's the, the software version of kind of soldering and building your own uh, your own uh, transceiver or, or your own receiver. And as you can see, you can go pretty crazy with this. And um, I used it to, um, to, to play with all kinds of stuff. And what I did last year, 
um, um, very, very quickly. What I, what I want to use as an example, maybe you know this um, traffic lights with some batteries and a big antenna on top, and they usually put them at construction places, and it's a regional frequency that they allocate to the guys, and if, they, if you ask them if they care, so they couldn't care less, if you ask them if you can also listen on that frequency. So, um, so what I did is I played a bit around with GNU Radio, and the, the, uh, um, the workflow that I use, and which I think is pretty good, um, is I used GQRX where I have the, the signal and first of all um, did some, some recordings which I used for offline uh, analysis. So um, back then I still used Audacity and all that stuff and tried to find out, okay, how is it modulated? Is it FM or whatever is going on there? What's the, what's the um, symbol rate? So I, I derived all kinds of parameters that I, use, that I have to know in order to build some receiver in GNU Radio. And here at the bottom of the flow graph, so th this is um, basically the, the very first part of a GNU radio flow graph where you have two inputs. And I either activated this, um, this part or this part. So I say I start with uh, some offline signal that I have pre-recorded in a WAV file and then do all my stuff. Or I use the um, UDP source. That means I'm just um, listening to um, opening a network socket. And with this, have the ability to kind of pipe in some streams and then I have a live receiver. That means by Using this architecture, I can use the very, very same stuff and first do offline signal analysis and use the same um, flow graph for also having then a live receiver that I can connect and um, listen to the signal and decode them um, live and in real time. And the only tricky part um, here is that you somehow have to connect GQRX with GNU Radio and you want to do it uh, in, the, in the way that you can use this UDP source because then it's the very same format as if you had used a WAV file. So then, it's very, then everything is very similar. And what I did is this is again some, some crazy so some format conversion. I again connect uh, to the, the uh, GQRX receiver and pipe them also through socks, but this time it's a bit more complicated. We have to get from signed integers to some flows that is GNU Radio is using internally. And yeah, then what, what we get is some uh, really nice live receiver, and I quickly wanted to show you um, how that, how that um, looks on your, um, yeah, on your PC. So these were the, the traffic lights, and you, um, you shouldn't wonder. So this, there are two signals. They, um, this was just they had to kind of um, put two pairs of traffic lights, so they use two channels, and yeah, you can connect them th um, through them. Yeah, and th this is now some very simple new radio thing that I just click together, not not really fancy, and then connect everything to a web GUI. Then you have so your your traffic lights uh, locally and can watch them. And if you, of, of course, you want to see if it works. So there's the um, PC, and there in the back you see the traffic lights, and you can see how they um, are synchronized and have your very nice uh, live display and live receiver with just some, some clicks and connecting GQRX to your, to your uh, to GNU radio and doing your stuff there, building your own um, receivers for all kinds of stuff that's out there. Okay, so actually I didn't want to tell you much. It was just that I... I think GQRX is great on its own, but it gets even better if you combine it with other programs and you, there are a whole lot of different options you can do. It's open source, so we just learned open is good or only open is good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you can download it from GitHub. Yeah, and this, so thanks for your attention. And I think some of the commands, if, if you want to try it out, I will put the slides here on, uh, on my website. And yeah, also write the comments maybe in a short blog post or something. So that if you are interested, you can just go there and copy paste and uh, try out if it if it works for you. Okay, so thank you for your attention, and yeah, I'm open for questions if you have some. Thanks very much, Bastian. Okay, so you have the great benefit of a working camera now again, uh, and all your all your talk was recorded in uh, high resolution. <laughs> Excellent. So you you, can, you have the opportunity to watch the video on YouTube uh, later, probably the next two weeks or something like that. Okay. Any questions? Um, I just wanted to say we must live in an, a sort of a mentally connected world because I was walking past a pair of traffic lights just down <laughs> the road from my house one week ago, and I thought. 
It'd be great to receive SDR signals from the wireless. You've told us how to do it. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, we can discuss it later. <laughs> ah, that would be illeg illegal. <laughs> Highly illegal. <laughs> but I mean, it's um, it's really interesting if you if you want to kind of understand how the system works. Like, is there security at all? Like. Like because uh, they are pretty old, so you might, uh, as you can imagine, there was no, uh, didn't seem to be authentication, let's say like that. So I mean, it's not encrypted, but it doesn't have to be because obviously its state is displayed <laughs> on, the, on the light. So, um, but there was also I couldn't find any authentication. Let's call it like that. So it's interesting to uh, understand what's actually going on around us because it's maybe safety relevant. Uh, yeah, what, what's the maximum bandwidth that GQRX can uh, handle? Uh, because well, you have very fast SDRs these days, and sometimes these FFTs are really blocking. Yeah, the yeah, that, 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 um, that's true. So in the background, GQRX um, uses um, so at least some radio blocks, and also that the display is but the display is custom. So actually, to be honest, I just use it with the RTL SDR. And whenever I have a B uh, or some some more capable use uh, USRP, like maybe something from Atos, then I usually <coughs> use um, um, Phosphor just to visually checking what's going on. But then it's uh, I'm not I don't know a number, but maybe 10 megahertz. I never tried. Yeah, sorry. Any more questions? No more questions? So thank you very much. Yeah, the applause. Well, well deserved.